So Google Stadia just came out and it's about as well as I expected. It's not great. The experience is incredibly rough for pretty much everyone involved. It's pretty much a technical disaster. But there's actually something else, in my opinion, that is more of a disaster that will hurt Stadia in the long term. And we're gonna talk about that in this video. But before that, YouTube might demonetize this video because I criticize a Google product. So if you'd like to support my work, you can do so by checking the links down below. Also, huge thanks to Nathan for the pledge on Patreon. You are fantastic. Fantastic. The problem that Stadia suffers the most, other than all the technical issues that we'll get to in a bit, is the target audience. We're going to talk about the target audience for Google Stadia in almost the same way I talk about the target audience for Tokyo Mirage Sessions. If you missed that, I'll link up to it down below. It's going to be on my Medium post or in the top right somewhere. I find that topic very interesting to talk about because this is a gaming platform with an incredibly confused target audience. And with a confused target audience, failure is pretty much inevitable. So who is Google Stadia? supposed to be for? Well, we know that Stadia is a game streaming service. You play your games through the means of the internet. The idea is that your games will be processed by the Google servers, while you, as the gamer, will only send your inputs to those servers. Typically, you have a game console or a PC to process the games themselves. And when I say process, I mean process the graphics, the AI, the sound, everything about the game. But with Stadia, you don't need a console or a PC. You just need something that can output video, such as a TV. TV or your phone or an old PC, etc. There are, however, several drawbacks on this method. Your experience on this platform will be dependent on your internet connection. So if your internet connection is very bad, you're going to expect tons and tons of input lag. And for games that require high reflexes, like fighting games, that's going to be bad news. And even if your Wi-Fi service is great, you're going to suffer the issue of bandwidth. A lot of internet service providers these days will provide a certain data cap for you. And if you go over that data cap, your internet will either be slowed down or you won't have any internet at all. Sending and receiving tons and tons of data will pretty much waste your data cap, but this is assuming that you're the one who has to pay for it. If it's your neighbors or if you're playing on a public Wi-Fi off of a mall or something, you might get away with it, but you know the internet traffic of those. I mean, I've seen freeways with more traffic headroom. But for the sake of this video, let's just assume that public Wi-Fi internet is really good. So let's sum that up. The ideal audience for Google Stadia, or game streaming services in general, will be people who have a hardware that can stream videos such as a phone or a smart TV or a PC that can't play demanding games, and people who have access to really good internet connection by either owning that internet connection or be in places where there is actually good internet connection. So just through the hardware alone, I'm not seeing the value proposition here. The least expensive scenario for Google Stadia to work is if you can play your game on a mobile phone with a controller in a free public Wi-Fi. That's the least expensive scenario, but the likeliness of that happening and providing a great experience in the real world would be very small. So Stadia needs to not be expensive in order for it to compete with other gaming consoles, and that's only talking about the hardware side of the consumers. What about the software side? Who are the ideal consumers for Google Stadia in terms of their games? Who are the people that can benefit from Google Stadia's features? What are the games that people will most likely play on Stadia. I think we should completely dismiss fighting games or multiplayer games in general because they require very good Twitch reflexes and you cannot have that when the game is lagging in and out. And while this depends on the games, quite a lot of multiplayer games can run on mid-range hardware. Destiny 2, for example, doesn't require a really demanding hardware to run. A laptop with a GTX 1050 Ti can run Destiny 2 at very good frame rates. So rest assured, if you're planning to use your games to play multiplayer titles, you'd better off buying a dedicated hardware and staying far away from Stadia. So what's left? Well, there are single player games, but even some single player games require fast reflexes. So if you're planning to play games like Devil May Cry 5 or something and want to get that high score, you're gonna need good reflexes and response time. So you probably shouldn't be playing that game in a platform that doesn't give you a good response time. There are, however, games that rely more on atmosphere or storytelling like Shadow of the Tomb Raider or Red Dead Redemption 2 or Assassin's Creed Odyssey. These are very demanding titles that require good hardware to run, but if you're willing to sacrifice frame rate over looks, even a game console can play those titles just fine and they can cost less than $200 these days. What about games that are less demanding like your indie titles? Well, if you're gonna play indie games like Cuphead for example, Cuphead not only requires good reflexes and response times, but 
it runs on pretty much anything. So I'd rather you play those indie titles on your old PCs or something because chances are you might be able to run them. Stadia might be able to handle them because these games run on anything, but since these games run on anything, you might as well get a cheap laptop or something. Another type of game that can benefit from not requiring too much reflexes are turn-based games. You can play your RPGs, especially those that are centered on turn-based combat or at least turn-based combat that actually pauses the game instead of the pretentious hybrids, but even they don't require that many reflexes. There are also strategy games like Civilization that requires more of your wits and minds than actual reflexes. Playing those games on the go as long as you have internet might be pretty cool. And there's also one very good use case that I can see with Stadia, narrative driven games. There are so many narrative driven games out there and they don't really require good reflexes if you discount the occasional QTEs. I can't even go so far as to say that visual novels would be great on Stadia. I mean, imagine playing a visual novel on your mobile phone anywhere as long as you have good internet. Imagine playing the visual novels that are on PC but haven't been ported to mobile just yet and you can play them to the use of game streaming. But let's be honest, I don't think Stadia will ever do that. So to sum up, Stadia is best targeted at gamers who are looking to play single player titles that don't require a lot of reflexes, whether it be indie titles or AAA titles or narrative driven titles or turn based titles. Rest assured that the audiences are going to be very limited in this scenario, especially when the big money makers in the industry are multiplayer titles. But here's the thing, considering that you're targeting middle class westerners anyway, what are the chances that they don't have a gaming console? According to ESA's 2019 Essential Facts, it stated that 75% of Americans have at least one gamer in their household, which would imply that they have at least one gaming platform where they can play their video games, whether it be consoles or PC. There are very good chances that the people who are in this conceptual target demographic already have dedicated gaming platforms in their homes. So how are you going to convince these people to move on to Google Stadia? That's the question right there, and I don't think anyone on Google can answer that. I don't think I can answer that question, or at least answer it in a way that doesn't involve cutting prices. And even if the services is straight up free, which it isn't, and you have to pay the game separately at the top of the subscription cost, there are still going to be tons and tons of issues regarding internet in general. It's going to take a long time before you can finally enjoy blazing speed and zero latency internet. But that's just on paper. How is the reality of the situation? Oh boy. I think you're in for a treat. Stadia on launch is just horrendous. It's really bad. I don't even know where to begin. Let's start off with the fact that some people couldn't get the access codes to actually activate the thing, as detailed by Gamers Nexus on his video. There are some really basic features that should have been implemented on day one, like buying the game. That can only be done through the phone. That can't be done in Chromecast, in the browser, just the phone for now. Not only that, but the act of changing the streaming settings can only be done through the phone. For now, only Google Pixel phones can run the Stadia app and you need the Stadia app to register. Don't expect it to run on anywhere else until next year. This should have been a freaking beta and we haven't even talked about the latency. So let's talk about it now. The latency is pretty bad. The delay between you inputting the command and the game registering the command is bad for any game that requires fast reflexes. The reviews talk about how it's a technical disaster at launch. If you want to know more details, details, links to the videos I cited will be in my Medium blog. Google's claims that it can run Destiny 2 and Red Dead Redemption 2 at 4K, it's not true, it's just upscaled from lower resolutions. Through a Reddit AMA, it's discovered that so many features are missing at launch. I can list pretty much all of them, but I want to highlight the important ones. Google Chrome only supports 1080p. It doesn't support 4K, HDR, or 5.1 surround sound. The Chromecast Ultra, included in the founders of the Premiere bundle of Stadia, are the only ones that will work with Stadia on day one. The other Chromecast units will only be able to play Stadia games after an update soon after launch. Also, if you're playing Stadia for too long through the Chromecast, it will eventually overheat because it's just an overglorified HDMI device. Now a lot of these issues can hopefully be fixed, and I'm sure that they will be fixed. It's just that I don't understand why this is a good time to release the product to the public. I don't understand why Google needs to have this product to be on sale in the market for people to purchase when it's clearly not ready yet. I don't understand why every single thing associated with Stadia has to be tied up to a Google product in some ways. It has to be a Chrome 
Chromecast instead of any other streaming devices. It has to be a Pixel phone instead of any other phones. We haven't even talked about their lineups, which is really not that impressive. No Resident Evil 2, Devil May Cry 5, Sekiro, Jedi Fallen Order, Cuphead, Doom 2016. If you're gonna have a Wolfenstein game, why Youngblood? That game is horrible. You have Mortal Kombat 11 and Samurai Showdown, but no Tekken 7? How can you have Football Manager 2020 and not have FIFA or PES? Is EA not being kind enough, or did EA look at your streaming service and figured out that it's not gonna make money for them? In conclusion, Stadia needs more time to mature. This shouldn't be a full launch. This should be a beta, at least. There are so many essential features that are missing that would make Stadia to not be able to hit the target audiences that they should hit, which are already very limited in the first place, and most likely already own your traditional gaming platforms. And I can't believe that we're living in a time where I call current-gen gaming platforms traditional. Yes, it's traditional. Yes, it's debatably outdated, but at least it works. Stadia at its conceptual level is struggling to gain its target audience. I think most people who bought a Stadia are people who already have their own gaming platforms and would like to try out Google's latest offerings. Maybe there are some who don't have the traditional gaming platforms, but that's highly unlikely. We're living in 2019. You can't exactly call yourself a gamer if you don't have something that you use to play video games. At the end of the day, it's all about playing video games and we want to play all types of video games, not just is the ones that will be constrained thanks to latency. If Stadia cannot offer that, then I'm afraid that it's going to last about as long as Google+. Plus or in fact any other Google products that they killed because there are tons and tons and tons of them. Who knows, maybe this is the future of gaming. I mean, we had Virtual Boy as one of the very first few VR gaming devices and that one didn't exactly work out. It takes about a decade before the VR technology improves and even then it's not that perfect. I don't know, I'm open for this technology to be good. I just don't think that Stadia should be the one to do it. Maybe Microsoft can do it with their Project X Cloud and I'm hearing good things about it so far. It has more games than Stadia, that's for sure.